Hello and welcome back to EVE Space Project. First up today we have a lovely little launcher. Now this is the Tundra mod and this is the longer version I sort of showed off at the end of the last episode. What this actually is, is a whole load of rocket parts being lifted up to the station. And because of how it works in, uh, with the modifications that I've got to uh, taking off from EVE on the Alien Space Project, uh, I do actually have around about the enough Delta V to get up into orbit, providing I use a couple of extra boosters to get up there. Now again, as you as was the original plan for the SpaceX uh, Falcons, these feed into the center tank. That's why I leave with full Delta V in the center tank. And again, I'm just showing the whole launch because whenever it's a new vehicle, I want to show how I'm getting there. So with this particular modification, I've got. Uh, 50 kilometer atmosphere height, I believe, on EVE. Now that's going to change in a little bit because there was some funny issues, but for the moment that's what I'm doing, so I'm just getting up. Um, going fairly high to begin with. And with the Delta V that I've got, I'm actually, this was actually my first try. And it worked out quite well, I've got plenty of Delta V, but I do have a couple of days until the manoeuvre node. So what I did was I set the manoeuvre node, and when I realised how long it was going to take, I thought, ah, oh, well, sack this, and I went back down to the planet and launched our second craft. Now, this is a fully electric aircraft. Um, these are the Heisenberg parts, which is the airship parts done for Wild Blue Indices from Angel 125's mods. And for this particular ship, I've just got a couple of wings on there that I believe are from the Airplanes Plus pack. Um, the little tail fins at the end are again from the Buffalo mod, one angel, one two fives. And this is just, it's nuclear driven, there's a little safer nuclear pack, I think there's two of them in the back of this, that run the entire thing. And what I have to do is go to the other side of the planet, pretty much, to pick up some signs that I accepted the mission for when I needed money and now I want to get it completed. So what I was actually doing was I was basically tidying up while this was on. I left this running in the kitchen and went through and tidied and tidied and got all the way around the planet. So as you can see here, a couple hours have gone past and I'm at the other side of the planet, roughly, I think I'm about a third of the way around maybe. Um, and we are at the first area. There's three areas fairly close together. So we just come in for a nice smooth landing. And as you can see here, one of the things I've done, because I know how bad I am, is to put little landing gear out on the, the tips of the wings and make sure that the points between those and the central landing gear, when they're extended, protect the engines, because I am so sick of losing engines on landings. And then just some air brakes, again, from the Airplane Plus mod on the top of the wings. And we're just gathering science from these three points. Now, I have to gather th certain science, as you can see there, I've managed to complete the mission. But I don't actually need to recover the science, I just had to gather it, so all of the science is going to get sent up to the station. But because of where I am, I realised that I can fly around to the quote unquote desert airbase, which will let me recover the ship for full price, or at least, well yeah, full price because I've not really expended any fuel. So with a little bit of a dodgy landing, I go for the desert runway. It's weird how when you dig up that purple sand on EU, it turns into normal sandy coloured sand. But we get here and we recover, transmitting the science first, gathering some extra science from the floor and then running away. However, this is where it changes. Now, what you didn't see was I updated the Alien Space Program after that and when I logged in, I was at a different altitude and the base, as you can see, looked quite funny. So I gave it, instead of dealing with that at the time, I just went straight on to back up to the main ship. Um, I lost all of my footage getting that actual ship docked, but I decided to take off again and I noticed that I required a hell of a lot more Delta V to do it. Now, what actually happened in the meantime was the because of the mod maker has changed the settings for the Alien Space Program where I was taking off from, it was actually, instead of five atmospheres of pressure, it was nine, I believe. So, with a couple of external engines taken from the EVE engines, with just a little bit of fuel on top, I managed to punch from the 9 atmospheres 
Um, and the atmosphere is slightly thicker, it's about 65 kilometers now. Eh, I'm just assuming that in the game some massive comet came along and filled up the atmosphere and somehow adjusted the laws of physics. But anyways, I'll give up on it. So I'm using my a little bit of a heavy launcher this time. I had to put some fins on it to keep it stable, but I'm using my short craft again because I'm not heading long distance, so I don't need the fuel requirements. I can get into orbit roughly with this one, so this is why I quite like this short one. And it's actually really well atmospherically balanced, if that's a grammatically correct sentence. I don't think it is, but I really don't care. I'm having to do so much finish at the moment, I'm losing the will to live. But yes, so all I'm doing here is turning this around and I, sh I shoved on those air brakes onto this because the way that the recovery mod works, even though you don't have to be attached to it, it works out a re-entry speed and if you don't have anything to aerodynamically slow down a rocket coming back to EVE, then it counts it as crashed even if you've got enough delta V to actually slow it down. Um, so. I put those on just to sort of give it the, the slow down through the atmosphere and I did actually land one, it was not too bad. But for the most part I don't I can't be bothered with the recovery, I just let the, the system do it. But as you can see here I'm just bouncing through the maneuver node. And this is where our next trouble starts. Once we actually get here, I've used this little extendable docking port thing that I managed to get from I've forgotten the name of it. It's from the squad expansion. That's where it comes from. And I thought this would dock to small size docking ports. So I plugged it on because I figured this would be an easier way of doing it. And we get some bounces and it's definitely trying to do something because it's flinging me off there quite violently to the side. But after several tries, again, I'm losing the will to live. So I give it a little bit more of an effort because, you know, the old college try and all that jazz. And I'm not being thrown too far. And as you can see here, yeah, this is just, I don't know what's going on there. But I am not one for repeating something endlessly. I prefer to find a new way of doing it. So we stabilize what's going on and we get out of Kerbal. And because we've got an engineer with us, all we have to do is remove said docking port. So up to the inventory, grab and activate our drill, grab and activate some extra fuel because I don't want to run away, get myself lost again, and just destroy that port. Now destroying that port will actually give us some equipment back on the station next to us, so it's not too bad. But we plug on a small docking port, which I had there. I can't remember why I had it there, but I did have one, so that was an advantage. And after a bit of messing about, we get back in, lock on again, and then have to do the whole reorientate and get us back on. But to jump through a dull story, we manage it, although I'm not entirely straight, I don't think. But we get all docked on, we get all clamped up. And that gives us one of our tourist missions. Now, it also brought me up another engineer. Actually brought me up my only engineer because I'd returned them all to Kerbin through, I don't know, stupidity, something like that. Uh, but we now have the people ready to actually build from this station because that's what the rocket parts are for. I want to build the extension for the station. But first, I would need to do a little bit of modification. And that modification again comes in the form of getting out and actually building things. So my first thought, there's two parts and I didn't quite know what they were, how they were used. So one of them is this little central pad and it didn't say you could build from it, but it sort of looked like you could. Um, this is part of the extra planetary launch pads. So I slapped it on one side, which was the side I was intending to build from. And then I went and grabbed the safer reactor which is from I think it's from the mole mod but it doesn't actually show it only shows up in power um, it doesn't show up in a wild, any of the wild blue things so I can never remember where it's from and then this little tag here which is a building extension tag which is what I thought the other one was but I brought one of each just in case now the other one is just a building reference I think it is so that you've got a point to control from in a particular direction 
Um, however, that one, you can use it like extra planetary launch pads. And what will happen is once you've built from it, it will just build, it will attach your whatever you've built onto your current structure that it's attached to, and it will attach it using the main node at the end of the your primary ship. If you don't have any spare nodes, I'm not quite sure what it happens, but the trick is to just make sure that something on the tip of your ship is your primary node and that it's got something, an attachment point free, and you'll just clip straight on from that, which is kind of cool. And it makes it a lot easier for what I'm doing. In the past, to do the same thing, what I've actually done is I've used the construction mod, which has two different docking pods. However, Rover Dude has a habit of changing these mods and save killing changes. Um, and it's usually when you're updating through a, a different point of KSB, but I keep my saves running and I don't, it kind of annoy, annoys me if I have to go through and actually pull out things, which was what I used that mod for in the first place. Um, but nowadays everything's linked in together and you have to put in so many things alongside the construction mod to make the construction mod work that it's not really worth the time, especially with how broken um, Kerbal Space Program is at the moment. For anybody that doesn't know, there is a lot of memory leakage issues and I'm getting them, I'm getting constant saves, crashes. Part of the reason I'm losing so much footage is to do with these memory leaking issues. They're, they're actually causing destabilizations in the game to the point where you can't save the game, you can't change craft, um, which actually messes with Bandicam being able to do what it does. You can't complete the video which is really annoying because sometimes you don't notice what's going on and you change scene and everything goes sideways and cattywampus. But as you see there, I managed to get through all this. We get a new chunk built onto the side of the station. So our station has been extended. And part of this is because I've got some parts from STX on this station and I don't know which ones they are. Um, so I want to get rid of them, but I also want to make the station look sleeker and give it more storage capacity without having log building docking ports in the middle. Again, my English is terrible because, well, I'm Scottish, so... Meh. But after we get all that done, it is time to return our last uh, drone ship. The drone ship's empty of parts. We've kept all the extra rocket parts up there. And what I didn't do was to... In the back end of this, there is some life support tanks because I just copied them straight across from something else that I made. So... I didn't empty out the life support supplies, but, ah well, what are you going to do? Um, I'm still going to get the money back for them because I'm going to land them. But this is just a standard re-entry. So going for EVE, now there's no modifications to this mod, so the reheating is right, and it is kind of sketchy. I basically try and keep prograde and have a very soft entry. You can't really aim for the landing pad with this. I'm sure somebody can and they'll do far better than me. But I try and keep it nose down, going maximum sort of 30 degrees up, just trying to keep an eye on the heating all the way in because you can lose it quite easily. What you don't want to do is you don't want to break too quickly in the high atmosphere. You want to be able to get into the bottom atmosphere, the lower atmosphere, um, at a good speed. As you can see here, I've tilted back because I'm sort of beyond that point. But it's, it's not great. You want to try and glide up. Um, but it handles it okay this time. And then all we're doing is dropping out of the sky. Now the problem I've got with this is because this wasn't done exactly the way I wanted to. It's kind of unbalanced. It's got extra storage tanks in the back and it shouldn't have. So it starts to go sideways and I just want to drop through the atmosphere fast. And the other thing I did, which is cheating, I'll admit, but I shoved some parachutes on this. Now, the parachutes aren't to land it. The parachutes are literally to pull the nose up at the last end. Um, but I time warp through it, as you can see here. And then it gets dangerous, so I pop the parachutes. I've still got some thrusters to land. But it's a nice and smooth landing. So, thanks for watching this. Um, there's a couple more videos coming out, obviously Christmas is coming up, but I have got a bit of a broken and sprained ankle at the moment, so I've made a lot of these videos, so I'll try and get them out fairly soon. Thanks for watching, and see you again!